Yo, sometimes life calls for a change. Not fake, just different. It'll show you a different way. And right now, I'm on to my different way. I can promise you this is the same span, but the reporting is over. I'd like to welcome you to the Mr. Span Official Podcast. Let's go. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Mr. Span Official Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Span. This is episode number 46 of the show. And uh, yo, man, I know it has been a, a good little while since the last time y'all heard from your man Span, man. Like, I have been uh, away <laughs> doing a lot of things, man, doing a lot of things, mostly family-oriented things, man. I uh, We had a, a family reunion here hosted by, your, by, by yours truly, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that was... Uh, that took a lot of my time. Like, I'm not going to even front, man. Like, that took a lot of time trying to plan a family reunion, uh, especially uh, since my family hasn't had a reunion since, like, uh, 1997. So, uh, yeah, my family has been long out of practice, man. And um, But it was good to see, like, so many folks come to Detroit on behalf of me. And like, like, really embrace the whole idea of like, you know, just doing the whole family thing and having, uh, you know, younger relatives who didn't even know that they had cousins out this way come into Detroit and like, oh snap, this is cool, you know, because everybody has a really fucked up view of Detroit, but like this, Detroit is on the comeback in a real strong way, and I, I had a really good time showing my family uh some of the good things that are happening in detroit on top of just spending time with family so uh yeah that was that's been what has been consuming your boy for the better part of the last month and a half man real talk just like really diving in and trying to help uh put that together right so apologies for my absence but that's where i've been at man that's where my head has been at and so uh it's time to get back into the shit but before we get back into the shit i am not alone man I am not alone. I have a longtime friend here on the show, man. It's first time here on the Mr. Span official podcast. Uh, I've known the, I've known this brother and known of this brother for some, for a good long while, man. The podcast circle is small, baby. The podcast circle is small, and I am uh, joined here tonight by the homie comedian, host of uh, one of the hosts of the Three Guys on Podcast, Randolph Terrence. Say what's up to the people, fam. Hey, y'all. How's everybody feeling? Hope y'all are doing good tonight. I hope you got your bulletproof vest on. Oh, my nigga. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I hope y'all have y'all vest on, uh, or you at least you got your, your glass shield on or something like that. Cause some, yo, man, um, let's just get right to it. Let's just get right to it. We ain't got to, we ain't got, y'all know how to get in touch with me here at the Miss Span Official Podcast. And if you don't, it'll be in the show notes. We're just going to get right into it because, uh, uh, like I said, it's been a long time coming for me and Randolph. He hit me up on, what was that, Threads? And he was like, yo, man, you going to have me on this show? And I'm like, you know what? You damn show right. I should <laughs> This should have been happening a long time ago. And, uh, yo, first things first, like I, I asked you, uh, Randolph, how are you liking Threads so far? And when I remember to go over there, yeah, yeah that's the kind of thing where I'll be on Instagram, I'll see a thread, I'll go to, I'll go to Threads. Mm-hmm. But it's not, it's not where I pick up and go right to. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how when you wake up in the morning and you open up, Twitter to see what kind of craziness happen. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't open the threads. Mm. Threads is like a, an extra thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've that's actually like threads. I like are, it. Yeah, I like threads. But one, they don't have any ads yet, which is one of the things I like about threads. Uh, right. The other thing is. Um, I've actually kind of replaced Twitter with Threads. I, I very seldom am on Twitter much anymore. So you just on Threads? I'm mostly on Threads okay. now. Like I, I, I have completely kind of like gave up the, the like the Twitter. I might, I might open up my Twitter every now and again just to see if somebody says something to me because I know oftentimes folks will forget that like I'm not really there anymore. So I'll go over there just to see. 
but for the most part, man, I've been on threads and I I be on threads a hell of a lot more than I'm on Twitter. I, I almost the only I, I haven't taken the Twitter app off of my phone yet, but I very seldom open it up anymore. Right. And I go I still go right to Twitter, although I just put the link to this on threads. <laughs> you know, on Twitter, and let me post. Hey, not only that, so like uh ironically enough, uh speaking of like like with the Twitter and stuff, um you know the whole thing with Elon Musk and like his his whole rightward turn towards uh you know being red pilled and everything else I guess um that was one of the things for me uh where it was just like all right this, I think it's, this this is a sinking ship and it's time for me to get the fuck up off of here and I know like um with the like that there's the, there's the one thing I don't I don't I do not like about threads and sometimes the users pat themselves on the back just for changing fucking apps, right? Like, oh my God, we're so much more. They, they do a lot of virtue signaling over there. Oh, they, they do a, so much virtue signaling. Oh my God, I can't believe people are still on Twitter. Like, motherfucker, it works. It don't works. <laughs> I just, that's the only thing I, I, I do not like about the folks on threads is that they tend to hold themselves up to a high regard because folks are still in, like, as if they're better than the folks who are still on Twitter. It's like, man, calm down, relax. You just you just showed a, a different app. You're not a better person. I just, I just, okay, so this link posted in threads and Fletcher Barber just asked, are we getting an emergency pod? <laughs> Yo, man, like I like we did, we could not have planned this. We could not have no. we could not have planned this because, like, you know, I, I I had some stuff that I had like kind of uh, saved up that I wanted to talk about, and I'm wondering how much of this shit we're gonna actually even get to because of what's been happening today. You know what I'm saying? So, right. um, first things first, we got breaking news, y'all. We keep talking around. We got breaking news. All right. So, uh, yeah, man, breaking news. Uh, Richard Simmons passed away today. Yeah, we talked about it in our pod. Yeah. yeah, man. Well, I, know. I, didn't even know. I It's one of those things like, are you still alive? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess he's not now. All right. Well, he's not now. Like, But here's the thing. Like, So Richard Simmons had kind of disappeared from the public spotlight. And... Um, it was one of those things where, like, I remember a few years ago. It's like one. Of, it's like how on Twitter, when motherfuckers will kill you, and you just like just living your yeah. life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember uh, there was a time where people were saying that the singer Avant was dead. And it was like, yo, bro, just had a little festival down south somewhere. Jackie man, Chan was always being killed. Everybody's okay. dying, you know. And, or if uh, one of those things where they'll post uh, an old story of somebody passing away, and it'd be like, yo, but you do you do know that this happened like eight years ago, though, right? Like, this didn't just happen. So like Rich, Richard Simmons passing away was like, oh, so he 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 was still alive. He just wasn't fucking with nobody no more. He just kind of stayed to himself at a certain point. And right. it's it's one of those things where um, I think that like because of how we uh, we view notoriety and celebrity, I think oftentimes folks who are not used to having it can't understand somebody who's had it all the, for, for so long no longer covets it and. Like, so when they decided, they just wanted to just say, well, fuck it. I don't, I don't need this and I don't want this anymore. I just kind of want to like go away and just like live my life for, for a, a large swath of folks, man. They just don't, they can't understand why anybody would just want to step away from the public in that way. Yeah. And he has been, first of all, he was famous for as long as I can remember. He was famous from now and then. Yeah. All my life. So, and then at some point it, other crazy stuff, and it was like he kind of got pushed to the side because mm-hmm. he was like he was like this off dude who like believed in in the mental aspects of it and really helping the people and well, no, there wasn't a lot of real bodies in his videos, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And then here comes High Bone, yeah, and then here comes that Susan Powder, if yeah, you remember that Susan Powder, and here that body by Jimmy. And he kind of got pushed to the side. Yeah. You know, P90 and be combined being ripped and pushing hard. He got pushed to the side. Yeah. You know, and then he was was out. And, you know, I didn't say I heard that Paulie Shear was trying to make a movie about him. And he, he I don't think he can go for it. He kind of 
Favors and Moses. I was just going to say, if I was going to think of anybody who could play Richard Simmons in a biopic, it would probably be Pauly Shore. Uh-huh. It would probably be him. Like, um, he damn sure has like the uh, like the likeness down. Now, I don't know if he has yeah. the mannerisms and the and the personality. If he can get that down, I'm not. Because when was the last time I saw Pauly Shore in anything? Oh. <laughs> I want to say class act. I Man, you know how long ago that was. The last thing I saw him in was in some about they were in like a biodome. I think. Yeah. I think that was him. He said biodome. <laughs> he might have been. I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm trying to think who was the star of that. It wasn't him. Thank you. I think he was. Like Brendan Fraser or somebody like that? Well, he was in the movie with Brendan Fraser. But Brendan Fraser was like a uh, uh, thought out in the fall. Yeah, like it was uh, like caveman shit or something like that. Biodome, yeah. caveman, one of them damn like late, like mid-90s comedies. Now, don't get me wrong. I have seen him uh, yeah, man. He was in Biodome. Biodome, okay. <laughs> he was one of the bald ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got it. No, I've seen him a lot on the stand up circle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen him. I've seen him on uh, shows. I mean, I'm not a fan of stand up, but. I've never seen a stand up. A lot of, a lot of yeah, I, I've he, never he, seen him do stand up at all. Like I've only seen him in like uh comedic roles in like television right. shows or uh in some movies and even the movies that I would see him in, it wasn't as though he had like a, a an expansive role. It was like, yo, they kept like I said, Class Act was the first thing that came up and he was only in Class Act maybe two minutes tops. Yeah, he was he's he stand up royal. His mother, uh his mother followed Sammy and Misa Shore, the comedy show. In LA. Okay. They're divorced. Mitzi got the tour. Sammy, Sammy was a comic. Sammy's an old school, like a Catskills type comic. Yeah. A good team. His father's Sammy Shore. Okay. So, Paulie grew up in like the heartbeat of up and coming comedy. Okay. Back when he was in the East. You don't know about that. Was early MT. Yeah. You know. And, um, yeah, he. I had an opportunity to really like cut his child so he's gonna be a stand up like that. And then he got in the office. Oh, well. And then there was a time when he was all oh, sure he, he was he was kinda all over the place. I mean like he was like of the MTV I wanna say like of the MTV kind of yeah. uh yeah. like that stick and then on like doing commercials also. I remember him having a bunch of commercials. I wanna say he had like a, a big sprite campaign at one point. It's possible. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. But his I don't think he, he never never involved in the state of comedy. Yeah. And uh, just moving forward, he had a reality show where he was kind of he was going to take over the take over the store in L.A. Bring it to new brains. But he never had that. <laughs> store is store is hot in L.A. right now. Mm-hmm. Any night of the week, he's some of the best comedy in L.A. It ain't any doesn't. Any work quality did because <laughs> the quality got drastically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would you would hope that somebody who who has that um who kind of has that leg up, right? When you, like everything mm-hmm. is there for you to succeed in that, and um, you you would hope that that person would be like, oh, this this is the incubation to be one of the greats. Yeah, and unfortunately, he didn't incubate to be one of the greats like he was kind of like, like again like I, I feel as though it was like almost a it, probably not but it feels like a, a flash in the pan sort of situation with Paulie Shore like he was everywhere for a hot minute and then he was mm-hmm. nowhere all at the same time mm-hmm. and uh all that to say rest in peace to Re- Richard Simmons though exactly <laughs> that's what this is all about rest in peace to Richard Simmons because uh yeah man I'm pretty sure that this probably would have been one of the largest stories uh, of the day had some shit not popped off. Right. Literally. Popped off is the right word. Literally at a Trump rally in Pennsylvania. Right. So um other breaking news is that they are uh they are saying that Trump got popped at a at a, at a Trump rally in well, Pennsylvania. I just saw an you saw an update? What they update well, now because I was, yeah, in my Twitter my chat just sent a source 
who has spoken with a member of the Secret Service tells CMC Trump was not hit by a bullet. Ah. Rather, a bullet did his teleprint. Yeah, I heard that too. I heard that too. So, uh, here's the thing. So, I was on, um, I was in here getting, you know, kind of getting prepped for the show. And I heard my TV in my bedroom. And I, I had on like MSNBC or something like that. Jonathan Capehart was on. And he was saying like Trump was attacked or something. I'm like, wait, what? So I get up, I go in the room and I'm watching and they're saying like, they think that someone, it was an assassination attempt. And like the audio that they had, it just looked as though like, yeah, they might've heard popping, but like when I looked at it, like, yo, maybe he got stung by a bee. Cause if somebody was shooting at you, I doubt that like, yo, that's the, that's all you got was a little blood around your ear. Right. And then I watched another video, uh, I watched another video, and this is when I'm gonna let me just pull this up because you know we can do that here. Let me pull this video up so we can uh, we can watch together as a family because it's what we do here. Um, Absolutely. Let's see. I'm looking at some video that won't snap of all. Wait, is this it? No, this isn't the Excuse one. Excuse me, one sharp. Is this this is the one right here? Okay, so I'm gonna pull this up so you guys can watch right along with me. Give me just a second while I share this screen here. All right. All right, so we're going to do this. I'm going to move that one to the big one. All right. So let's see what, it, let's, let's see what this, this, this is here. If you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. I think that's all that video shows. I've seen some other ones. I saw them taking what looked like the person who got another person who got hit. I guess it was somebody yeah. took that person out. Um, and then the shooter did. Um, my first thought was, I hope he's not black. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'd be surprised if it was too many, like if it was that many black people there to begin with. But because yeah. uh, you know, like even when they have the blacks for Trump at at a Trump rally, it's usually like white folks with blacks for yeah. Trump shirt on at the Trump rally. And that, and that one lone black person usually put up on the stage. Buddy with the perm, I know. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking about buddy with the perm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. So like, a couple things, man. You know, I know it's like th- this is happening, like. This is re- this is very recent, like you know. So social media is a fire with theories and all this other shit. I will say that, like I said, I was skeptical that even, there were even shots fired because I didn't even hear shots in, on the MSNBC broadcast when they were showing it, right? So then mm-hmm. I see this and I can hear the shots. I'm like, okay, as someone who shoots guns, mm-hmm. I'm like, that's that sounds like a 22 long rifle. I'm wondering what, like, how anybody was able to get. A 22 long rifle caliber weapon into a Trump rally. I'll right? be one better. The video that you show, I don't know if this is truth. I don't know what this video means. Mm. They showed a video of somebody who was elevated on the like you know, like have a little couple of buildings around places like yeah. that. Yeah. Like I got a bathroom in it. Elevated on that, shooting from that angle, shooting mm. from an elevated angle. And it was like he was laying down there. I'm like, well, the Secret Service had that cooling off. There should be no way to get up there and to, and to if this is true. Yeah, should be no way to get up there. That's the thing. Is even in a wide open space like that, that's if not even being the Secret Service, I'd be like, somebody needs to be up there, you need to be over there. Yeah, people high, make sure nobody goes into that. You know. Yeah. It's, so that just kind of sense. That there, there's so many different things as to why, like, oh, okay, it's gonna be convoluted as hell, but I guess I got to do it. So, like, just uh, like last month, Joe Biden was here in Detroit for the NAACP Freedom Fund dinner. Right, I was at that Freedom Fund dinner, 
me and my father in law we went uh we went to that and just getting to the venue of course you know you had the protesters outside but also you had the i mean you had the detroit police and everything kind of cordoning off you know streets and stuff then you had them directing traffic in like single file lanes in order to even get into the parking structure where we would be parking my car um once you got past that you had um you had secret service they were you know they had the dogs out they had the 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 things like looking up underneath your car and making sure you didn't have any bombs in the car and all this other stuff right then of course you got to go through you know the metal detectors and they they mm-hmm. patting you down and stuff and so like my father-in-law he's on a walker and stuff so they they check in the walker and shit making sure he don't have anything in the walker and this, this is Detroit, right this is in Detroit Michigan so, is everything in open carry <laughs> And this is the open carry state, yeah. Okay. So open are, carry. They, are they fanatical about this Pennsylvania? <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> are they fanatical about this Pennsylvania? Like, y'all would put up magnetometers and check cars. Do we think Pennsylvania, like, bump up Pennsylvania? Hey, I, I don't know. I've, I've never been, I can't even pretend that I've ever been to Pennsylvania. I don't know what they oh, were doing there. Yeah. <laughs> But, but but the point that I'm making is with the Secret Service, especially for someone of 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 the level of a President Biden or of a pres- former President Trump, this is the level of security that you got to get to to even be in the vicinity, let alone just be like close by. So like even if there was like somebody in the little in the stands like right behind him, like if if like nine times out of ten those folks were being checked even more thoroughly because of their proximity to him. So there was that aspect of it. The second aspect of it, to me, like I said, as someone who shoots guns, sounds like a 22 long rifle, right? Now, for anybody who knows uh, what it's like to shoot a 22 long rifle firearm, it's like shooting a BB gun. It doesn't have much velocity to it. It's not a very large round. It's, we use it for plinking mostly. Like, I use it to train. Like, I use it, like, I, I, when I was teaching my daughter how to shoot, the first thing I put in her hand was a 22 long rifle gun because it didn't have much recoil in it and it wasn't a lot of velocity to it. That to be all that to say, you're not using a 22 long rifle weapon in an assassination attempt. Okay, <laughs> this is no. you're not using that. That's just not what you're gonna do. So I say that to say, to some degree, this is why I feel like some of this was staged. I don't have any proof that this was staged. I feel like this was staged. A lot of us. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of us. That's the first thing. But you can't prove it. I can't prove it. But I feel it feels it. that way. Yes. It feels that way. To a lot but of I folks. I know I'm not, I know I'm not alone, uh, the only one. I can't prove it. But I feel <laughs> it. It kind of feels like. Uh, Shout out to Tanya. Because I can tell you right now. Um, man, listen. There's gonna be shirts. The the fist pumping. Oh my God, he's gonna sell this shit to 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 the oh, cows. Sure. Come on. I just went friendly to do something on this because he put up a thing a picture of that, and I'm like, oh God, no way you say that. I'm out. Yeah, it's the picture of him. He's gonna have like a flag. He's gonna have shirts. He's gonna. Andy said he's gonna walk into the convention this week like Willis Reed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Think about it. Think about how he acted when he when he finally got his mug shot, right? Like when he got that mug shot and he he's he's insulting black people by saying that the black community is connecting to him because they also have mug shots and shit. I've never felt proud of my mug shot. Every time I I've posted my mug shot, but every time I posted like this was some bullshit that happened. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it wasn't to say like uh yeah, man. I'm, I'm sure everybody in the black community can relate to this bullshit of me getting arrested. I know a lot of people who've never been arrested and they don't have a mugshot. And to say that, like, yo, black people relate to criminality is bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. So, like, the way he's been um, trying to sell that as, you know, this is, you know, how people are coming to uh, support him, to me, it seems as though. Especially considering after the rally that like uh, Biden just had in Detroit yesterday, right? Where you got folks who, and we were going to talk about that too, with you know folks who were talk, telling Biden he needs to get out of the race and everything else. But like the defiance of the actual electorate who wants Biden to stay in, and how fired up that crowd was for Biden, 
Like it doesn't surprise. Like it just to me right now, this seems like a badly written episode of Scandal. The way Trump tried to use this as a moment to rally his 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 supporters to say that these motherfuckers tried to assassinate me. This is why I'm doing this for you, and they want to take they 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 trying to take me out. Like I I see the like it's I see the play. I see the play only because he's been doing this for so long that um, it's just hard not to be cynical about it. Yeah, that's how I feel. You, it's, it's hard not to feel like that. On the other side, I'm also feeling like, well, P just can't really like <laughs> because there's a lot of I've seen that sentiment too on online already. Like they just elected, which them. would you know. Um, Let's say you were going to fake your own shooting. Wouldn't that be part of the reason why you would to go to seven people vote so that you could, you could capitalize on it? You know, it just feels. It doesn't feel it, like it just doesn't. It doesn't feel right, man. Like this, it feels like a bunch of bullshit, man. Yeah. And like, feel. and and for it to happen, because here's the other part, right? I'm sure. And like, yo, jot this down. I'm saying it. I'm sure at some point in this campaign going forward, Donald Trump is going to get behind a microphone and he's going to tell people that Joe Biden was behind this assassination attempt. Oh, a congressman already did that. Yeah. He had in chat. It was sent to me. The name of the person. Uh. Mike Collins in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately said that the Republican district attorney in Butler County, Pennsylvania, should immediately file charges against Joseph R. Biden for inciting and assassination. Okay, hold on a second. Uh Randolph, they say you echo in, in the in the I, I know. I can hear you. But shout out okay. to J Fool. Shout out to J Fool. Thank you. So you can't hear me either, can you? I can hear you, but I'm not getting an echo. Yeah, I'm not getting an echo. Let me see now. Test, test. Am I echoing? I'm not getting an echo. How you say, how, how does he sound, folks? Chat. How do I sound? How do we sound? Because we were... So y'all don't know we were doing this lead man. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to trying to get it right. Okay, so Jay Fool is echoing. still echoing. I don't know why. Okay, let's do this here. Um, one second. Let me try something here real quick. Ah, oh, the beauty of live broadcasting, man. How's this sound? I mean, that sounds great <laughs> to me. Am but, I e- am but, I echoing? Chat. This is am uh, I echo? Still an echo on Randolph. Mr. Span is okay. Still an echo for me. Yeah, they're, they're getting an echo for you. Because I don't hear any echo. I don't hear one either. Let me. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna refresh this, and hopefully that might do something. Oh, he's, oh, oh, okay. He said, "No, you're good now." No, I'm good now. He says you're good now. Okay. Okay. And you guys can hear me okay. We in business. I'm so sorry. We couldn't get this yeah. right from the get-go. We tried. Yeah. Appreciate the chat room for y'all's contribution you, to the show, room. baby. Chat room. Hey, beep, 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 beep. I got to get that sound effect, but yeah. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> chat room coming through in the clutch, man. Real talk. Now, let's get to yeah. it. But uh, yeah, man, the uh, shit. You, you were saying something about... Uh, Someone already saying that Biden was uh, yeah, a yeah senator. A, a, oh, it was a senator who said it. Congressman, excuse me, congressman. Okay, from Georgia, Mike Butler. I think is what the Andy Mike Collins. Okay, never heard of him. Well, that's kind of yeah, kind of the never point. Heard. It's kind of like the like 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 all mm-hmm. the, the the Congress people who are coming out to tell Biden he needs to drop out. Yeah, and this this guy said that uh, Joe Biden sent the orders, Mike Collins. Okay, so even the, oh, oh, so let's 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 dive into it then. If yeah. Joe Biden sent the order to have uh, Donald Trump assassinated, why isn't he dead? Why isn't he dead? 
And also, what are you filing charges for? The Supreme Court just already said that the president, if he has, if he, if he orders it as an official act, he is immune from prosecution. And this yes, is what he you, did. So, if Joe Biden, if Joe Biden ordered somebody to assassinate Donald Trump as an official act, he couldn't be prosecuted for it. And also, SEAL Team Six got better shooters. Yeah. Come on. I man. mean, that's come on now. Come on, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's the absurdity of it all. Like, I they know, had better shooters, and they wouldn't have got caught. They wouldn't have got. <laughs> wouldn't have got caught. They wouldn't have had like yo. It, they just they just took his ass out in the sleep or some shit. Like, it, they have. Yeah. Like, like, come on, man. Like, they don't have to do this in this way if that's who. Like, if that's what they feel like they wanted to do. And so, um, ironically, it's like as soon as that order came down, as soon as the Supreme Court. Uh, order came down like that was the first thing folks were mulling over so like yo so joe biden could just get a call now right <laughs> like people were mulling over that on social media openly right now i know a lot of people right now are at home and they're hearing that joe biden i'm sorry that uh that donald trump was shot at and that whoever was shooting at him missed and they at home just like this here just what the fuck yo god damn god damn <laughs> it's a lot of motherfuckers upset right now man right a lot of people upset like y'all had one y'all had one good shot at this motherfucker and then y'all and fucked it up right you don't first of all if you're gonna do that you you bring in professionals who don't miss So, you know what I mean? You bring in professionals for this type of shit. You don't bring in somebody who you think may or may not. That's stupid. It's yeah. stupid. But people are stupid. Most people. And That's I I, mean, we, I think we, me and you both have been kind of yeah. like on, on the same vein for a long time on social media, man. Like, And I know I've been saying this for a long time. Like, understand that the public at large has been dumbed down and there has been a concerted effort to dumb down the public. And... When you can dumb down the public, mm-hmm. you can get away with more because they don't actually know how shit works. Right. So when they don't know how shit works and you do something fucked up, they don't even know that they're supposed to be mad about it. Right. And this right. is and this is the gist of like Donald Trump's fucking like coalition. A lot of the people like that's why he loves the poorly educated. He doesn't like they do not want folks to know, even when it comes to the history, this is why they're trying to get rid of the books. This is why they don't want your kids to learn, like, you know, what they call in critical race theory and all this other shit. They want a dumbed down populace because a dumbed down populace is a controllable populace. And with shit like this happening, like, yeah, you got a whole bunch of people who have been watching Donald Trump operate like, yeah, this sounds like some bullshit. But to his supporters, this is a rallying cry. Now, I don't know what that means for the independents. And the moderates and the and the undecided. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck there is to be undecided about at this point. Like, I don't understand an undecided voter in 2024. I just don't. Like, I don't get what the fuck there is to be undecided about. Like, the the, the choices couldn't be clearer to me. But Biden when, Biden did a speech. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. Yeah. And he's got to draw the contrast. He's right? going to do, yeah, he's going to say what he said. Yeah, he's got to draw the contrast because you got to understand, like, we, the, the, like the, the irony of Donald Trump trying to make himself a, into a martyr while at the same time understanding that Donald Trump sent the mob to go kill his vice president. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's, and that's, that's the, like, that is the, the tenor of what we are like dealing with right now is just like, yo, I can't believe, even though I, I, I've seen it now. I'm like, I, at first I didn't even think like they were even gunshots. Then I heard another video. Like, oh, there were actual gunshots. But even in that was like, yo, so all he got was like blood in the ear. And then I'm, he didn't even actually get shot. He just got like yeah. some, some, okay. But again, not that you, you know, not that you want these sorts of things to happen. Right, right, right. We don't want we, these things. We to have happen. to say this. We don't want these things to happen. But just understanding how this is going to be sold to the public, he's just like, ah, shit. This, 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 all right, so now this this is like I, I've seen enough episodes of Scandal to know like what well, a good script writing, and this seems like yeah. really you know some script writing. But this is bad. This yeah, is bad. I was yeah. telling I was telling the Queen, this is bad. It's not. This is not a good. 
Yeah, it's, it's bad. It, it opens up the door to a lot of darkness. There's a lot of dark days. It opens up the door to retribution towards mm-hmm. any and all, any, any and all Democrat, any and all progressives. It yep. opens up the door to you can't now criticize this man because if you criticize him, well, then you're you're going to lead towards these people coming after him. Uh, he's going to run on it. I mean, he's he can just waltz in. Yeah, he can just waltz into the right house and waltz into the right house now. There is going to be that we'll have to wait and see. But then again, here's another thing. It's, it, as we talked about, the American public is dumb. They can forget about this shit in, in a week. The greater the greater public, you know. Yeah. It also doesn't negate what's in Project 2025. Absolutely we, not. We already know what's in Project 2025, and we're going to keep talking about it. The wild card is what is the media going to do with this now? <laughs> Well, you know. like, let, are let, they going to help let's him? Talk, let's talk about what's going, what's been going on in the media, right? So, um, as Joe Biden just yesterday perfectly articulated, was like, "Yo, yeah, I had a bad night, and you know, or not even just a bad night. I noticed how people responded to him misspeaking when he mm-hmm. uh, he was referring to Donald Trump, but he he uh, he was referring to Kamala Harris, but mm-hmm. he said he said uh, Vice President Trump." And Mm -hmm. I saw how people respond to that. And I'm like, yo, y'all have gotten to the point where anytime this man has a miss, like he just misspeaks. Like I, you, you talk on, on, on podcasts Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I talk on podcasts. Hey, I I just did it a second ago. It's not a big deal. It's not a fucking (laughs) thing. But the way I post, I tweeted, uh, how many times did your mom look you dead in the face and called you by a sibling's name, a cousin's name? Her her husband's name, your daddy's name. Man, listen. How many times does that happen? It it happens quite. It, it happens more often than folks realize, and we just let right. it go because we're not looking for it. I and mean, you could you could say that your mother's losing it. Good luck. Yeah, you could. You know, I told <laughs> people. I told fun. people to say, "Yo, hey, if your mama asks you." You know, do I look like Boo Boo the Fool? Just tell it y'all a favor and yes. see, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> good luck. It's not going to be know. good. It's not going to be good. But the, the the point that I was making was like, yeah, that that debate was terrible. I watched it I'm like, oh shit. As I was watching, I'm like, ah, this is not good. But the way that folks responded to that, and the way folks have responded to every action he does since then, has been uh, like, as as Rod would call it, disasterbation. Because mm-hmm. every time he says or does anything, well, and, and it's as if people have forgotten that this man is, has been a lifelong stutterer, and yeah. like that is a speech impediment, and he's he's dealing with that. He's dealing with it a lot better than a, he's dealing with it better than most, right? He's had time to practice his techniques to kind of get over the stutter, but the idea that like folks have totally disregarded that when it comes to how he articulates things, and, and like um. Like that's been problematic, but also when you act as though this man can't do the job that he's actively doing right now, like he's in the job right now doing the right. job. So to act right. to act as if he's not capable of doing the job that he's currently holding while doing the fucking job is in, is insulting. But the one thing that I've always said was that when it came to uh, Biden's or everybody hand ringing about Biden was that it wasn't even necessarily about Biden. It's always been a proxy for them not necessarily being comfortable with Kamala well, Harris stepping about, up. This is all about Kamala Harris. Yes, yeah, Kamala it's Harris. All about, it's up. all about Kamala Harris. We yeah. don't want Kamala Harris to be president. This is the thing I've never understood: is when he picked her to be his vice president. What did you then think was the next thing? She you was know, next up. Is, that's the next thing. She's that's the next always up. the next thing. You pick the person who can be the next person. Unless you're a Republican and you pick Mike Pence or, or you know, fucking Dan Quayle or whoever the fuck. Yeah. They, they pick. Democrats always pick the next person. Next up. It's the next, it's the next person. The only reason Biden didn't immediately follow Obama was because his son died. And he wasn't up to it. Yeah. That's the only reason he wasn't up to it. And, you know, when it came back around and he was up to it again, he went for it. He went for it and he won. You know, so he picks Kamala Harris. The plan is he does two terms, then she goes in. 
that's the plan. It's always right? the plan. Is that what we do? <laughs> it's always the we're, plan. So that's what we're thinking. Because like that that's always like and here's the other part, right? So like you have folks who believe it, like, yo, well, you know, Joe Biden was gonna like he was only supposed to be president for one term and then he was supposed to like step aside. And I'm like, yo, man, who actually gets elected to president and makes himself a lame duck the moment they take the like the oath of office? No one does that. Yeah, right. No one fucking does it. But y'all expected this man, like, we knew he was old when we elected him. Right. No one expected, I, I, at least anybody who, uh, any, like, I, 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 won't, I won't say nobody. The people that I listen to and respect, no, none of those folks expected Joe Biden to say, hey, I'm going to just do this one term and then I'm going to bounce. No, right. None of them. It was always these idealistic folk on social media. And oftentimes, like I said, this comes back to like the uh, the, the the dumbing down of the populace where you don't even understand like the civics of it and the in the and the and uh, the, the dynamics at play. But like is everything is an, is, is everything is idealized. Everything is idealized. And because everything is idealized, yo, we could just throw these shits at the wall. And it's happening even now amongst people who are in the fucking Congress. You got 20 people on the Democratic side, side talking about, yeah, well, we could just kind of like have an open convention and, you know, mm-hmm. Gretchen Is that Whitmer, really that's what we can do? Yeah. That's we, what we can we do? Could, let's say, you know, get, get, get Gavin Newsom and Gretchen Whitmer and, you know, like, whoa, 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 whoa. We already got somebody on the ticket. Yeah. That's how I know they're full of shit. Yeah. What are, y'all do- like, what are y'all talking if about? You had, if you had said to me that, and I said this on our podcast, if you said to me, listen, okay, okay, look, take George Clooney. Okay, look, I don't George think Clooney. that Biden should run it, should run again. I think he's too old. He should step down and immediately elevate Vice President Harris, or we all either he elevates her or we all rally behind her and we get this going because she's the future. Let's go with this. If you said that, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. That sounds good. I mean, I don't agree with it. I yeah. would leave it up to Biden, but at least I would think that you were acting in good faith mm-hmm. if you said that. But you ain't saying that. You talk about open convention. We have a deep bench to pick from. It's just, we don't need a bench. I we mean, don't need a bench. We don't need it. But it's good to have. <laughs> yeah, it's great to have. It's good to have. It's great we to have. But in this instance, yeah. you don't need the bench. Yeah, we don't need a bench. We got it. We got our. We got our. We got our sub. <laughs> we got our sub. She's already our there. Ready to go. We got our sub. You only go to the bench if you're something's wrong. With your, if something's wrong, with your starter and your sub. Yeah, that's when you go to the bench for this particular position. Yeah, we got our sub. I know who I'm subbing. Like I coached my daughter's basketball team two years in a row. Yeah, I knew who I was subbing in and subbing out yeah. every quarter. Every time, I get <laughs> every the same. quarter, I know who I'm sub. I know who I'm starting, and I know who I'm subbing in. I'm knowing I'm subbing them out. Yeah, every time. If something happens to my sub and my starter, now I'm scrambling. Now I got to get bench. in this bench. I got to see who got it. Yeah, now I'm looking at the bench. Yeah, but we already have. We and that, that's been the thing that's been the most insulting about the cries to get Joe Biden to step aside. It's like, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, he had a bad night, but then everything after that, like, yo, okay, so he misspoke during this press conference. And he, he he said, he said, Vice President Trump, you knew who the fuck he was talking about. It wasn't as if people he didn't like it wasn't as if people didn't understand who he meant. But then like to blow that up in the way that like the media has been blowing that up and to see people that I not, like, well, not only that, like to see people that I like. No, I got it. Like <laughs> that I like. Like, yo, man, but I don't know, man. I'm like, yo, bro, what are, like, what are y'all talking about? Wait a second. Wait, a, wait, wait. Are you falling for this shit, too? Are yes, you falling are. for this, so what too? You think, what you think they're going to say when they hear this? Former President Trump issues his first statement on Truth Social. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong and that I heard a whizzing sound. Shots and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Oh, my God. He wasn't shot with a bullet. He, oh, my God. Like, dude, he, didn't get hit. he didn't get hit by the bullet. Again, like this, like, uh, this, like again, we, the we, lies we have see, already started. We're going to see this picture all over social media. This motherfucker like doing this shit. And, and yeah. the other part was like how it was kind of it was kind of crazy. I think somebody uh, posted it on threads earlier, but they were talking about how uh, in the moment where Secret Service is actually trying to shuffle his ass off the stage, he told them to wait just so he could do his little fist right. thrust in the air and say fight and all this other shit. And sure enough, that picture I'm seeing that picture all over social media right now 
by not even just like you know people that you would think would be you know Trump supporters, but like just like you know other folks like man, this, I'm gonna see this picture. I'm gonna see they're gonna edit the fuck out of this shit, and it's gonna be just like yeah. that, it's gonna be like that mugshot. It's gonna be on t-shirts and everything. This is yeah, this is not good, man. This is some some bad shit, dog. And then there's the, the other part. The, the the flip side of this is that like now you're gonna have you're gonna have people who normally hate Donald Trump have to come out and say, well, you know, we can't have this happen. This is such a tragedy. We we right. we have to go. You know, this is not right. who America is, and we don't want this to. You know, and, like, and they gotta say that, right? You know, they like especially those who are in elected positions, they got to say that. But then you're going to have some folks in our position who are just like, yeah, well, I don't want nothing bad to happen to them. And secretly, they like, I mean, shit, I'm just saying they missed. It's going. It's a lot of motherfuckers like that right now. Yep. There's a lot of them like that. And, um, <laughs> it's, let's see, Dio Hughley's on tw- uh, threads right now. What is sad is that this is the very America that they seem to want. It is. We finna see that image of Trump with blood in his face and his fist in the air every day for the rest of the year. Like, yeah, yep. that's what's going to be the rest of the time. Yeah, that's what's going to be on. Po- it's going to be on. It's going to be on p- t-shirts. Going to be on posters. It's going to be on the side of a building. Watch. <laughs> Democrats are condemning violence. Republicans are attacking Democrats. The two parties are different. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Let's see. Uh, Biden said, oh, wait, let's, let's, uh, let's see. We got some comments here. Jay Fool is in the chat room. He says, uh, Biden said they are pausing all ads. This motherfucker about to get a week to go on offense unchallenged. Yeah, I, yep. I, I feel like that's a that's a mistake for Biden to do, especially considering some of the momentum that he was just about to get. This is all, again, I hate being this fucking cynical. I hate Isn't what the world is, how it happens I hate what, now. I hate what the world is doing to me because right after. Biden has an electrical ass uh, rally here in Detroit where he gets his footing on where he gets his footing and like he's he's forceful in his speech. He's not sounding all wispy. He's not sounding like he's coming off of a fucking cold. He has command of what he's saying. And like, yo, suddenly Donald Trump gets shot at and Biden pulls all of his ads like, no, the, the, the threat is still real for those of us who would be under threat of a Donald Trump presidency. Yep, and we gotta put our we gotta just ratchet it up. By the way, yeah, we gotta keep our foot on the fucking gas. So if he's if if they're really talking about pausing ads, man, that's to me that seems like a fucking mistake. Because I'm like, ain't no way in hell, bro. Like they already, you've already got people within the party telling Biden to step aside as if he can't do the fucking job that he's already doing. And so, like to concede, like to concede this level of uh 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 concede the stage, so to speak to Donald Trump and what I believe and what I think millions of people believe to be a contrived uh event I don't know. And like I said, I, I don't I can't I don't I don't have any proof that this is contrived. It just feels that way. Feels. It feels that way because <laughs> that of what we because of what we know what and who we know Trump to be for so long. That's why it, it feels that way. Right. I could be wrong. I'm not even opposed to like the idea. I, I would hope that I am wrong. Right. I right. would hope that I'm wrong. But it feels. But considering <laughs> who we dealing with. Yeah. Mm, it, it certainly feel, it, feels that way. It's not be. It's not above him nor his party to do some shit like this. Absolutely not. <laughs> That's the thing. If it was a Democrat, you'd be like, it's not possible. But this shit, you're like, it's not above. I'm not above. It's not above it. It feels like this motherfucker is trying to turn an episode of The Apprentice into scandal. Yeah. That's what it yeah. feels you like. Know how crazy you have to believe to be to believe that Joe Biden would would order the death of Donald Trump. You know how crazy that you'd have to be? Again. But if you told me that Donald Trump ordered the death of Joe Biden, you'd I be like, totally oh, believe God, it. I, I totally fucking believe it. Only because, again, Donald Trump right now is running on retribution and revenge. Yeah. So you mean yeah. to tell me somebody took a shot at Donald Trump, didn't kill him, and he's not going to continue to run off retribution and revenge? And revenge, yeah. Fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Like, I don't believe it, man. Let's see what Jay Fool says something else. He says, uh, it's not like they've been caught staging events multiple. I mean, shit, even the whole, um, think about, like, Think about how often Donald Trump has put people in harm's way. Not 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 even counting January 6th. But think about when that motherfucker had COVID during the pandemic. 
and went to that debate and all of his people had like was with him and none of their asses was wearing masks. Mm-hmm. And how many of them got sick? How many of them? Shit. Think about how many Herman died. Cain. Herman Cain <laughs> paid the Herman ultimate died. fucking price for fucking with yeah. Donald Trump. Fucking with Trump. <laughs> paid the ultimate <laughs> price, bro. This is what he does. He puts people in harm's fucking way. Even his secret service agents. Because if somebody's busting caps at us, yo, man, hey, hold on a minute. Let me get this. Hey, fight. Somebody's shooting at you, motherfucker. You didn't know if, if, if they were if they were legitimately shooting at you. You don't know if the shooter's down yet. Right. But you're trying to get this fucking photo op. Yeah. Fuck out of here, man. Fuck out of here. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it's not. Uh, it's, we, it's we, kinda, remember the hair. The president of the Heritage Foundation just said a couple weeks ago that we're in the beginning of another revolution, and it would be bloodless it. if the left allows it. He just so said that. he just said it and again. So it again, it, if you wanted to fight somebody, wouldn't this be a way that you would kind of, kind of open up the door to that? And the only ones who've even been talking that way have been those on the right, right. <laughs> Right, the they only, talking. They talking a lot of good shit, ain't they? They are the only ones who talk that way. Now, I, I will, I will grant, I will concede this. I am one of those folks who like, and you know, I'm I'm left leaning, but I am also a Second Amendment proponent. I've never been of the of the idea that like, yo, I I should get rid of my guns because you know, I should get rid of them. Well, there's, <laughs> like, there's responsible gun they, ownership. They, I come out of a gun family. I don't have a gun yeah. now. I come out. My brother has a couple. I come out of a gun. Me too. Know, because, my, because my father was a military police officer. I've talked about on the podcast many yeah. times. He has a lot of guns in the house. We learned how to use guns. We learned how to shoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, learned how to take care for guns. Clean. There you go. go shoot, clean everything. Take yeah. gun apart. Put it back together. We learned all about that. Yeah. But I don't want half the population. I I don't want a lot. Of, my father says it best. My father, he went to, when he was working for pardons and paroles, um, he had to uh, get a concealed carry. Mm-hmm. Went to the class. He was like, I wouldn't trust anybody in that class to, to carry a gun. I don't trust the teacher to carry a gun. To teach the class, I don't trust him carrying a gun concealed. Yeah. I don't trust none of these people. Don't trust anybody in a concealed class. Don't trust anybody with the don't do not trust any of them. Yeah, they're not. The, they don't know what they're that's doing. Actually, they're not serious. That, they're not thinking about the shit. They're out of their fucking minds. Like here in Michigan, that's actually one of my criticisms of like how people now are getting licensed to carry yeah. firearms, only because I know that there are some unscrupulous folk who are you know NRA certified instructors. Again, mm-hmm. NRA, but they're NRA certified instructors. And they won't they won't even give you a class. They will just take your money and give right. you a certificate. Right. And you yeah, now they, take the certificate to the, you know, to the, you know, to the police department yeah. and apply for your, you know, your concealed carry your, license and everything else. Care. And yeah. like the price even of the class, I remember when I was when I was going through the process to get my license and everything, I remember the class being about two hundred bucks for the class. Then it was like a uh, hundred and fifteen dollars for the application fee for the um, for the, the CCL? yeah for the CPL just for the application fee. CCL, yeah. And then I was initially denied my license, and the reason why I was denied my license was because I black had, skin. Oh no 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 it wasn't it, wasn't. <laughs> it could have been it could have been oh. but. Uh, <laughs> In Wayne County, Michigan. I saw your name, Antoine. That doesn't hey, sound hey, Anglo. Hey, that, that is, I mean, it's a French name, but <laughs> 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 but uh, no. So they um, they denied me my license the first time. They sent me a denial, and the reason, like in Wayne County, Michigan, they were denying anybody who had been arrested for anything. So, if you really wanted the license, you had to go before the Wayne County Gun Board, and you had to explain to the Wayne County Gun Board. What happened during your arrest? What happened during that case? How was that case adjudicated? And at the time, I was uh, I had got a uh, I had an, I had been arrested for soliciting without a permit. This is <laughs> what were you trying to sell? I wasn't selling. I, I don't know if I've ever told this. I might have told this story on the on the pod before, but I was uh, this is around as I was looking for work, and 
it was a it was a marketing position, and it just so happened to be door to door sales. And I went on a day of observation with the company. Like they just take you out and you walk with a guy. You see the job being done. Yeah, right. To, right like right. basically to see if this is something that you want to do. Mm-hmm. And because I had been on a previous day of observation. I was like, I right. once once I figured out what I'm like, oh fuck, this one, this another one of these. So I didn't actually, I wasn't selling nothing. I was just with a guy <laughs> <laughs> who was like trying to sell some shit. And someone called the police and said, "There's a couple guys in the neighborhood soliciting or whatever." And uh, you know, the police showed up and, and and you know gave me and the guy a ticket because this guy didn't have his. He didn't. And have what a, what was the product? Oh my god! It was Detroit Pistons tickets. Oh god! It was Detroit Pistons tickets, which is also why I'm so hard on. Where'd y'all get the tickets? That sounds that Wait, sounds illegal, right here's, there. Here, you here's the tickets? other part, though, right? This is why I'm so hard on Detroit Pistons fans because we couldn't sell those tickets to save our fucking lives. They like Pistons fans are very much front runners, man. Real talk. They when the Pistons are good, everybody acts like they've been a Pistons fan all their life. But we, <laughs> but we couldn't sell those Pistons tickets to save our fucking lives. But he was selling Pistons tickets and like oil changes at like a local oil chain shop somewhere. So it was that. But he didn't have a proper permit, and so the the uh, the, the like the police they gave us a. Um, they gave us a ticket for soliciting without a permit. So, of course, again, I am a prospect. I'm not an employee. I'm not selling nothing. I'm not knocking on no doors. I ain't even talking to these people. Go back to, you know, go back to the office. And I said, well, because of what happened, it actually was, it, was, it wasn't because of what happened. I wasn't going to take the job anyway. They were like, apologies for, uh, you know, for what happened. He should have had, you know, we, we, we should have given them the proper, you know, documentation and everything else. We understand if you don't want to take the position, we will take care of this ticket for you. All right, cool. Fast forward a year later and I get pulled over by the state police. I'm working as a utility worker, a, a utility shutoff worker. I'm cutting people's lights and gas and shit off. <laughs> And uh, I get pulled over by the state police. I don't have a seatbelt on because I had my, my tool belt on my and it just was cumbersome. Yeah. And uh, I get pulled over and it's like, yeah, there's a there's a warrant for your arrest in Warren, Michigan for soliciting without a problem. Like, wait, a what? <laughs> wait, what? A warrant? Seriously? You turned into, you turned into that brother that was in front of the judge. I didn't know I didn't have a license. <laughs> Listen, I'm in I'm I'm in the jail in my work uniform. With the crackheads and then the dope dealers and shit, they like, hey man, you think, hey man, I was stealing lights, man. You think they gonna? Uh, do you think they gonna? They, they gonna come and pro- motherfucker? I ain't supposed to be here, man. What are you talking? About? <laughs> what are you talking about? But that arrest stopped me from getting my license at the time. So when I had to explain to the police, I had to explain to the police what happened with that case, and then they was like, all right, so that you wasn't selling, you you wasn't trying to buy no pussy or nothing. That's is exactly what he asked me. He like, right. you weren't trying to buy no pussy? I'm like, absolutely not. I don't have to. You know, I don't have to do that, but <laughs> they gave have me, to and want to do different. Have things. to and want is different. I didn't have to, and I did. I, I, you know, I wasn't in a position to really want to do that neither. But at the same time, they're not knocking anybody who does. I'll just say that if you, that's how you get down, that's how you get down. No power to you. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, man. Like, so they gave me the license, but, but I, I say all that to say the things that I had to go through in order to get my license. And like now, when I see people getting their licenses to carry firearms they're make, like because of some of the actions of republicans they're trying to make it so easy for you to get access to these deadly weapons right i've i own an ar-15 i shoot my ar-15 i have fun shooting my ar-15 i would not put an ar-15 in everybody's hands i would not well, do I that i don't think i don't think anybody in the population needs to have an ar-15 you don't need to have any type of gun that can be turned that can be converted into well a i'll say this I will say I this. There's no reason for it. The I reason if why. Had, if we all had uh, six cylinder guns, I might go with that. I'll say this. Too late now. No, the, the, look, genie's look, the, the genie's out of the bottle. The genie's out of the bottle. And the re- yeah. and I'll, I will say this. Those who do not like my politics also carry AR-15s. That's why I said the genie's out of the bottle. I yeah. don't think anybody should be allowed they to also carry, carry AR-15s. AR-15s. There's no reason and to carry so, AR-15s. So, but if... If you know they're carrying AR-15, uh, it's it's it's, it's almost it's almost AR-15. it's almost one of those things where um, it's daytime like nuclear like nuclear, nuclear weapons nuclear weapons. If like they're nuclear carrying weapons. it, then I hey. have to carry it. 
But I don't think anybody's carrying. There's no reason to have an and AR-15. I don't, and I, it's not like I'm rolling around with the AR-15 yeah. every day. My AR-15 yeah. is nine times out of t- is at the house. I'm yeah. not rolling. No, you know, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I There's get no exactly. There's no reason yeah. for any of us to have an yeah. AR-15. Anything anybody tells you about it is, oh, I, I just I have it for hunting. Really? You're no, hunting I, with I've an ne- AR-15? I've never, no, I've never hunted with my AR-15. <laughs> or, or I, you know, it's fun. Ain't nobody disputing that and it's fun. He, Here's the thing. What like, are you practicing even, for? Even tell, when I was, uh, for. even at work, right? So there's a, you know, I work with a bunch of white guys. It's a blue collar job. Some of those guys are like into hunting and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll never forget one year. This is when I was, I, I've been a pipe fitter now for about 15 years now, but I'll never forget when I was new and like a bunch of those, those guys, they would get together and they would go up in, uh, up to Northern Michigan. One of the guys has a cabin up there and, uh, he said, uh, yo, Span, you want to come, you know, you want to come to the cabin this Thanksgiving uh, weekend or whatever? I'm like, to the no. cabins? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, man, we are going to, you know, we're all going up north or whatever. And I said, well, who you invite? <laughs> who all going to be there? It was, who all going to be there? You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was like, well, it's going to be me. It's going to be this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. I'm like, so what about the brothers? I ain't heard you name not one brother yet. He was like, well, we asked, you know, such and such, but he said no. And I was like, well, if he ain't going to be there, I damn sure ain't going to be there. And he and was that like, well, sounds what? like the beginning of surviving the game. Exactly. I, I said exactly <laughs> that. I said, have you ever seen the movie Surviving the Game? Surviving the game? And he said, he said, nah, what's that about? I said, it's about a bunch of white people who are hunting a black dude in the woods. I am not going with you motherfuckers <laughs> yeah, up there. That sounds like the beginning of surviving the game. I am not hey, man, doing it. You- you want to go spend a weekend with us? With a bunch of white you know, cats, man. I'm like, you know, nothing, weekend, we just nothing against there, my white cats, man, because some, some of y'all are cool as shit, but some of y'all I got questions about. And then, like, like real talk, some of these motherfuckers actually have the audacity to have political stickers and shit on their work trucks. And I'm like, how the fuck do you feel comfortable enough to do that at work? I, I got a talking to for having a Not My President shirt on one yeah. time. Yeah, anybody who has the political sticker on their truck on their truck is always going to be the party that you don't want to be associated with. Listen, it's never going to be. It's uh, it's always going to be that party. You know what I mean? It's always them. They're the ones who put the stickers on their shit. <laughs> you know, don't nobody on this side put stickers on anything. I don't, That's not something we do. We I don't, don't put, put stickers on my personal your, ride. We like, might put a. We might put a. A choose love sign up or some shit like that. <laughs> you see that shit a lot. Or love is love or choose love or <laughs> all are welcome. You see that shit a lot. Oh, oh no. So Jay, the, the gun case is how I found the show. Oh, okay. Oh, that, that wasn't the gun case. That, that wasn't that that wasn't that incident though. That wasn't that incident. That was something different. I know what you're talking about though. When I got arrested in Chicago. I've been arrested twice, y'all. I've been arrested. You're getting arrested. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just just being black in America, I guess. Shit. No, nah, um, you never heard that story? No. Oh shit. Well, let me tell you. So, um, one year I went to Chicago, and um, this was like early in my like like my my gun carrying days and shit. But I was trying to be very much versed in what the laws were and everything else. So, um. I was in Chicago for my grandmother's birthday. I always go to Chicago. Even my grandmother's passed on, but I still go to Chicago during her birth, like for her birthday. And, you know, that's just sort of what I do now. And I took my gun with me, but I I kept my gun in my luggage. Right. Because I knew in Chicago that um, I took I took a handgun. I knew in Chicago that there, there was a law in Chicago where you could not have a handgun. Right. Couldn't carry a handgun at all. Chicago was just like uh, this. Uh, this uh, this law came down after the shooting of Ben Wilson. For those of you who are not familiar, Ben Wilson was a, a, a basketball star uh, out of Simeon High School in Chicago. Uh, he was gunned down outside of the school. His mother advocated for the banning of a uh, of, of guns in the city, and they passed a handgun ban in the city of Chicago. Okay, um, so I knew not to carry my pistol. Right, I just kept it like traveling i wanted to you know as i was traveling hey listen i'm in chicago let me put this up but when i get back home i want to have something with me because this is just how i roll when i'm at home right so one day buddy of mine i I was getting ready to go to uh 
go go just do do some touristy shit. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go to down. We, we gonna go to downtown Chicago. We gonna do some touristy shit. We gonna take pictures downtown. We gonna go to the you know the Buckingham Fountain. We gonna go to the Willis Tower. We gonna go to the Navy Pier and all this other stuff. And you know we gonna just kick it. And I get uh, pulled over by the cops. Six cops pull me over. And they said they pulled me over because I failed to signal while changing lanes. <laughs> of course. Six of, of them. Of course. Which well, didn't you, make you you uh failed you failed to remember that you were driving while you were black. I so was driving that's, while, that's exactly that's why, why I got, got pulled I was over. driving while black. But also what they did not understand was that I also knew is that because I was licensed to carry a concealed weapon, if you run the plates on my car, it alerts any police agency in the nation that this person is licensed to carry a concealed weapon. This is what they did. So they were assuming that I would have the gun in the car with me. The gun was not in the car with me. It was at my grandmother's house. In my you learn today. Yeah, it was in my grandmother's house. So they pulled me over. They're looking for the gun. Gun's not in the car, but they did find an extra magazine in my car. So uh, they asked me, you know, well, what's, what's this? I said, well, shit, it's, it goes to my gun. Well, where's the gun? It's at my grandma's house. Where's your grandma's house? So I tell them where my grandma's house is. I'm thinking at the time that I'm just being a cooperative motherfucker. I'm just being cooperative. I'm just trying to like, yo, man, I, I, I'm, I'm really just trying to get to my, you know, to my homie so we can go downtown. We can you know, kick it like we said we was going to do. These motherfuckers sent, folk, sent squad cars to my grandmother's house. And, you know, granny not knowing that she could, she, she could have told them they, they'd had, they, they couldn't come in and all this other stuff. She didn't know that. She allows them to come in. They go to my luggage. They get the gun. And um, I got arrested once they found the gun at, the, at my grandmother's house. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> what, what ended up happening was uh, they lied to the judge and told the judge that they found the gun and an, and an, an additional magazine mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. car with me when they arrested me. So... Because they lied, that's like at first I was actually considering just like let's plead into the shit so I can get it over with so I can get back home because I was like, yo man, I can't be here tomorrow. I got to go to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you ain't gonna fuck up this check. <laughs> like I, I, I got to go to work. Like this is some bullshit, but I got to get to work tomorrow. Like so, if we can get this shit adjudicated real quick so I can get back to the job, like cool. But I got to get back to work. And when they when I when I saw that the 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 prosecuting attorney just flat out said they found that all of that shit in the car I'm like oh that's I, and it was it was so funny to me later I could laugh about the shit now I I I yelled out and I'm like oh that's some bullshit <laughs> not guilty y'all I know. Like, that's some bullshit not guilty and um so I ended up having to fight that like I had, I had to, like go back and forth to Chicago between Detroit and Chicago for a few months. Uh, shout out to uh, my uh, long, um, my mentor, man, Mr. Jones. He was a teacher of mine in my high school in Chicago. He actually got me my lawyer for uh, for that case, and uh, I got that case dismissed. And uh, you know, I'm you always go. I'm forever grateful to Mr. Jones for finding uh, finding my, that, that that attorney for me. But uh, yeah, man, I got that that case got thrown out. They didn't have, they didn't give me my gun back though. I had I would have well, I would have had to sue the city of Chicago. You ain't gonna, look, get, you ain't gonna get everything. Well. I, I didn't. I was, as a matter of fact, I just said, well, fuck it. It would cost me less to just go buy another gun and to be trying to sue the city of Chicago. So I just ended up buying another gun. But um, yeah, that's how Jay Fool found the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Jay Fool found the that's show. The gun, that's the gun story. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that's the one that he knows. But um, yeah, man. So like, anytime I like, uh, I would, I would, the second time I, when I had to go get my license renewed. That case came up. They denied me again. And I had to go before the gun board and I had to tell them. And the cop was like, how the hell did you get this thrown out? And I had to tell them, yo, people got caught lying. They got caught lying. They did not find that gun in that car with me. They, but they, went, they went before the judge and said that they found that gun in the car. They did not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man. It was I, 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 it's some bullshit. And like right. around that time, though, I will say this around that time was when I was actually I actually joined the NRA. It was around that time because I was like, yo, this is this. This was some bullshit. 
I was, yeah, I was. The NRA, is, the NRA is not for us. It's, it's not, and I, and I like what, what, what ended up turning me away from the NRA was Philando Castile. Yeah, that Philan- tells you right there. Philando, when, when Philando Castile happened, that's when I renounced my membership in the NRA. And ironically, like anytime the N- I, I'm always amazed. I'm like, how the fuck? Because I've moved since then, and I'm like, and it will still. Send me shit in the mail. Like, right. How the fuck do y'all even have my address? Like, <laughs> I gotta figure out how to like, you know, if you can figure out how to erase your shit on it on, online, do it because these motherfuckers will find you. Right. They will right. find you. They will mail you shit. And the NRA is always begging for money. They always begging. That's anytime they ever sent me anything in the mail, it was to ask from. It was just asking for money. It was a fundraising event. <laughs> well, they, they they never been for, they've never been for us. You know, never been never been for us and not for us. If anything, they're for they, they exist to con- to be a weapon of control against us. Absolutely. If I say Absolutely. that right. Now, I did join the uh, the National Association of African American Gun Owners. Like, um, now they're for us. I did join them. I did join yeah. them. But uh, like even that was like a like because uh, you know there's a different process in, in in joining them than it is the NRA. The NRA just wants you to send them some money. And they'll, yeah. see, they'll see, they'll see, send them some money. They'll send you a card. You a member. Naga, yeah. something, something, something totally different. Like, uh-huh. hey, you got to be a part of this gun club and you got to be a part of this and you got to make sure you come to these meetings. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. NRA is their headquarters is not that far from, you know, where I live now. And I see them driving out, driving out that way. Um, Big ass building, dog. Hey, <laughs> big ass building. I'm big ass I'm buildings no, ain't cheap around these parts. I'm, just glad I'm no longer <laughs> contributing to that shit, man. Real yeah, talk. Yeah, it's not cheap around these parts. Because uh, it's in some, it's in a prime location too, in one of the more expensive parts of, of Northern Virginia, in Tyson's Corner. That's money over now, there. Aren't they trying to move their like like their national headquarters from New York? I wouldn't I doubt they, it if they no, were. Because I, I believe they were trying to move from New York because they they something happened. I forget exactly what. Something happened and they were trying to move from New York and I want to say they were trying to either move to Texas or Florida. One of those two Republican led states. But like they they've been trying to get out of New York for a minute because they got into some trouble recently. And I think it has something to do with uh the Wayne LaPierre was uh like using the NRA funds like for some personal shit. Basically grifting. Doing like doing the grift. Yeah. Like he's you a know, huge grifter. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like even with the uh like say for instance with uh like the the thing that got me hemmed up in Chicago, there was a, a case in Chicago by uh, there was this guy named Otis McDonald, and Otis McDonald was uh, his house was getting broken into in Chicago, and he defended his house with a handgun, right? Um, but the city of Chicago, because there's a handgun ban, him you know they they hemmed up mm-hmm. Otis McDonald, mm-hmm. and so the NRA used. Otis McDonald in order to get Chicago's handgun ban deemed unconstitutional because you know and this is something I actually do agree with like yo I don't if I'm not comfortable dealing with the rifle I should be able to use something in my home to defend my home I shouldn't be relegated to just using a shotgun or a long rifle or something like that I should be able to not to say that you should be permitted to just walk around the streets of Chicago or anywhere else with your gun but if I'm at home and I'm trying to defend my home to hem me up on like just trying to defend the house, you shouldn't get at me because, yo, I did it with a pistol as, as opposed to a rifle that I do agree with. However, uh, oftentimes folks, you know, a lot of times on the right, they will conflate. Yeah, we defended the rights of this black man. No, you just decide you, at this particular moment, what you did was you opened it up to where they can actually sell, sh- you know, handguns in Chicago. Right, let's, right, right. Let's keep it a buck. Y'all wasn't doing it for the altruistic reasons of oh, we want to protect black people. No, you wanted to sell guns. That's what y'all did it for. I went back and forth to Coley on the war about that on Twitter a few uh, a few years ago. He was one. of those, Is he still in the game? He's not with the NRA anymore, but he still does his shit. And, uh, you know, one of the things about him and I said, like, yo, you know, when the NRA went bankrupt, because they had to file bankruptcy, I believe. And they had an NRA, you know, TV, YouTube channel and the whole shit. He had a show with them and everything else. I remember. I remember. Yeah. 
And like I, I went, I had a back and forth with. But one of the things, of course, when it comes to social media, like you know, it's it's like when you're dealing with people who have a, a larger following. I'm not one of those folks who like just believes that, like, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it, it's because like, I've had some back and forth with some with, with a few folk. Mm-hmm. It, uh, not uh, what, what's that girl's name? Azalea Banks is another one. But <laughs> but like She's no don't don't yeah do I, I, I try, no, no I'm I'm just saying <laughs> I've had some back and forths. But mm-hmm. oftentimes what ends up happening is. You don't end up talking with them. You end up talking with their followers and their followers end up just like, you know, trying to like drown you out as opposed to not necessarily engaging with the substance of what you're saying. And so when I was talking about why, you know, uh, the oldest McDonald thing was going on, he's like, so wait, so he, he couldn't understand. I, I Wait, it's not even that. It's not that he couldn't understand. I think he was willfully. It was a willful misunderstanding. With Coley on Noir, as to why the NRA was even uh, like even uh, approaching the Chicago gun ban, because it wasn't about gun safety. It wasn't because if you think about how um, Republicans talk about Chicago at large when it comes to guns, oftentimes is how bad Chicago is about crime. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a uh, so wait. You're concerned about. Chicago's crime, but you also want Chicago to have more guns. Make that make sense. In the hands of folks who are not trained to use them and oftentimes aren't licensed to have them, you want to be able to sell more guns. And um, yeah, I, I had a little, a, a little back and forth with Coley on the wall about that. He's he, he's 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 disingenuous as shit. And I, I lost. Said, what is he doing now? He he does his YouTube channel, but it's just not it's, it's not sponsored by the NRA anymore. Mm. He, and he's he's an, he's a, a, apparently he's an attorney, but I find him very disingenuous. And uh, I, as someone who used to watch his channel as a gun, you know, as someone who likes guns, I used to watch his channel. I I can't fuck with that guy no more. Just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Let's see. We got some. Let's, let's see. We got some news, man. What do you think? Let me let me ask you this here. Mm-hmm. Waka Flocka had a show recently mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> where he he uh, he was kicking out Joe Biden supporters, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Because. <laughs> I'm of the belief. I'm like, yo, I couldn't believe anybody was still going to a Waka Flocka show in 2024. That's, that's, but. that's the first thing. <laughs> that's the first thing. What do you? What What is he doing that you want to go see? Yeah. But if you're if you're paying money, I don't know if that's legal for him to do that. That's a that's a. He doesn't own the venue. He mm. performs. He's performing at the venue. He doesn't own the venue. Mm. So that's a venue call. Now, venue can receive can receive, can um, refuse service to anyone for any reason. Mm-hmm. They don't have to give you a reason. That's fine. Uh, for but for him to say that, how, how do you enforce that? Does he have a Does he have a bunch of stormtroopers that are going to walk through and kick people out? I don't know. I'm I'm I'm. Uh, I, I believe there was, was that video. just a suggestion he was making. I believe there was video to the shit. I'm gonna read this story real quick here. This comes out of uh, Billboard. It says, uh, Waka Flocka Flame is riding with Donald Trump this presidential election while performing in Utah. Utah. Uh, earlier this week, the No Hands rapper instructed supporters of President Joe Biden to leave his concert. All Joe Biden voters get out of my concert, he said while on stage. We going to see y'all in the bingo game. We're going to party right now for motherfucking President T-24. Okay, again, you, you can't. T-24. He's, he, he's not President that's he, he, still that's still a <laughs> um, that's a venue call. That's not a that's not an artist call. The artist doesn't get to choose that. That's a venue call. You can ask for an unruly. You can ask security to remove an unruly. Yeah, I mean unruly or something like that. As the artist, they will accommodate you, but they don't even have to do that. I don't think if they don't want to, unless the person's not unless the person's just talking shit. You know, the venue has to then decide and say, "Okay, we can get you the fuck out of here." I don't know if anybody you know? actually left. I, I really don't. I know we, I know we saw like, uh, we saw a video of him talking this shit. I don't know if anybody actually left the show, and if they did leave, they probably left with their own volition because they were like, "Oh, that's what yes. you were." So now the thing is, um, the thing that I would say is, 
Okay, so let's say you are, for whatever reason, you're a Waka Flocka fan. Let's just yeah. Okay, if, if that's <laughs> let's just say that. However, you're also you're also a sensible voter. Let's just say that you still gonna go give your money to Waka Flocka <laughs> again. Who the fuck is going to yeah. a Waka Flocka show in 2024? <laughs> who's, like, who's going? Exactly. Who's going? Who's going? But if, but if you are, you're one of the few, <laughs> the proud, the many, the few. <laughs> now, it's, 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 the, it's, it's strange, chosen. right? It's strange, right? Because, uh, like, take for instance here in, um, what was that, here in Detroit, like when, when Trump was here recently and they had the black church that Trump went to. That was filled oh, with the black church that was full of white, full folks? white folks, right? That's, now, that's your place. You know about that church. So I do know about that church. That yeah. church is right around the corner from my workplace. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all about that church. I thought that church was closed. That's what I've heard. They have like a really small congregation. Listen, listen, listen to me and listen to me clearly. It's like friends and family. <laughs> clearly. So that church actually used to be actually used to, at one point used to have a, a really large congregation so much so that there was a they, that church has a campus with about four buildings right many of those buildings are now closed shuttered there are 18 wheelers sitting in the parking lot that probably shouldn't even be there right <laughs> So I'm um, like when I found out what church it was, I was like, "Wait, what? I, I thought that place was closed down. Did not know that there was a new pastor, a new church who had taken over the building, not the buildings, but the building that the Trump rally was held at. And um, it's on the west side of Detroit. It's not. It, I mean, it's not." I'm going to just say this. It's a middle class to. What's the best way to say this? There's a lot of people there who are on the way up. I'll say that. They're on the way up because you can't get no more light lower than where they are right now. Okay. I'll say that. But the church itself, I thought was closed. The fact that he had that event there with a bunch of white Trump supporters and then like there were the black people who were there were like there was some Detroit area rappers, people like Sada Baby, stuff like that. Now, I've listened to a couple Sada Baby songs. I might like one or two. But he's not my shit. <laughs> right? He's not for me. I know I get that. I'm an older nigga now. I, I get uh, hey. Yo, yo, span, you you a middle aged now, nigga? Like that, your your time is not what these what these kids is on. But when I heard a motherfucker like Sada Baby say that Donald Trump was the first person who made him feel like voting was something that he needed to do, I was like, nigga, are oh you out of god. your fucking mind? <laughs> oh my god, are you out of your fucking mind? And like the idea that like these rappers, like they they, they keep. Like if you if you if you if you notice, it's like these. What what's the, what's the? I'm always searching for the proper word, but it's these ancillary niggas. I, I go on ancillary. It's these ancillary niggas. It's these. It's like these people who are not necessarily the people that everybody is on, but people kind of know a little bit about who they is. A little bit, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like when he went to the Bronx, right? I had never heard those rappers. He had a couple rappers in the Bronx when he did that. Uh, he did something in, in, in New York. Yeah, they're probably big, probably big. Never heard of them niggas. Never heard of them. There are gonna be plenty of people who be like, "Who the fuck is Sada Baby?" I never heard of this nigga. Now some Detroit people may know who Sada Baby is, but the public at large, like, it's gonna be a lot. Of, never heard of this nigga. Like, like there's a contingent of like the uh, the rappers who are gravitating towards Trump. Not your big name rappers. You're not hearing Nas coming out on behalf of Trump. You're not hearing Jeezy coming out on behalf of Trump. You're not hearing Jay Z come out on behalf of Trump. It's these, yeah, but noted, but noted rapper and Instagram and uh, and uh, social media personality Amber Rose, (laughs) noted rapper Amber Rose, Amber Rose. 
noted rapper. They they they've been promoting her as a rapper. I've never heard of Amber Rose yeah. Bar in my life. <laughs> In my life, just because only... you've never heard it now, don't now mean I, that I know she's happening. been attached to rappers. She's been attached to rappers. She was involved I mean, with Kanye. Briefly, West. she's been attached to rappers. Briefly, I mean, she was <laughs> wait. She was married to uh to Wiz Khalifa. Well, yeah, and she had Wiz Khalifa. She had Wiz Khalifa's baby. Um, she was attached to Kanye West. Uh, and you know we 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 seen what happened to brother you know to to, to Kanye to to much to my chagrin because I love Kanye's early shit but I I find it hard to listen to it now considering you know this is just a personal thing I I find it hard to listen to the shit considering what's going on now but um yeah like it's 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 it's, it's really interesting to me how um how it's always like these people who are like ancillary it's these ancillary people who are like attaching themselves to trump like I, I what was that uh what's the what's that girl's name uh it's it's a little like a little white rapper or influencer or something like that i saw a video of her and they were like yeah she's into trump just like amber rose is and i'm like who the fuck is that i don't know who, who are these people yeah. who are these people who the fuck is this oh better they, yet. And it's funny they talk shit about hollywood and and media and stuff like that but they want to be part of it desperately so bad mm-hmm. You know, so the culture. Bad. they want to be part of the culture desperately. Better yet, this is how I look at like a lot of the times. This is like, who are these niggas? <laughs> we need to stay away from these niggas. <laughs> oh, who are they? That's I, a gift I love. I don't know these niggas, <laughs> man. I don't know these niggas, but they they are coming out for Trump and droves. He said, I think she got a kid with Twenty One Savage or one. Of the, no, it's Wiz Khalifa. I don't, <laughs> yeah, it, Wiz Khalifa's her baby daddy, man. She was married to Wiz Khalifa. She had a baby with Wiz Khalifa. But uh, outside of that, Amber Rose has been known for nothing but the slut walk and being attached to Kanye West. Exactly. That is what we know Amber Rose for. Now, whether or not Amber, like, I don't know anybody who's going to Amber Rose. Unfortunately, I would hope that nobody is going to Amber Rose for their political advice in much the same way that I would hope that nobody's going to Sexy Red for their political advice. (laughs) Right. But these are the people that they put in front of us and then like, yo, I'm getting so much, I'm getting so much support in the black community. The blacks, they love me. They love Do me. Do they? They love me. I got shot today. 50 Cent called me. He said, sir, sir, I was with shot nine times. I had blood in my eye. I couldn't see anything. And then I saw you get shot today and I said, sir, I once had blood in my eyes too. And I saw you raise your fist and I had, I had... I, I had hope in America. 50 Cent, he called me today. You know, because in hip-hop, you get shot. In hip-hop, you get shot. <laughs> like, come on, man. This is what we get, man. This is what, <laughs> this is what this we This is where we're at, man. This is what we get, man. Like, yo, the season finale of America is like fucking... This is, this is crazy. We are living in the season finale of America. <laughs> Are they, are, but are the credits rolling yet? That's the thing. Are the yo, yo, I hope not. I would hope not. I got a, the, I got a twenty-one year still, old daughter. Where, where they do the still shot with it with the with the credit name underneath it, <laughs> and then hey. the name rolls underneath it. <laughs> I would hope that like this yo. one here, this one here. No, real talk, man. I, I would hope. I would hope that uh, this isn't the season finale of the American Experiment. I really would. It feels like it. It feels like it, but I would hope it isn't, man. I, I my daughter is twenty one. I hope there's a country left. I got for a sixteen year old man. I would hope uh, I, for your daughter. For like, I would hope that there is a, a country left for them that um, that we could leave for them that uh, that respects their autonomy, that uh, respects no, their well, rights and gone. history and stuff. Like, hey. But we gotta fight for it. That's the only thing I I, I always tell people. Like, even now, man, when we when they was talking that shit about Biden and everything else, I I, I take it now as a personal affront. <laughs> if I got anybody around me, I had a friend. I was I was talking with a friend of mine uh, a couple weeks ago, and she really she's not politically like inclined. And she was like, yo, but I, I I listen to your podcast all the time. And I'm like, yo, so you listen to my podcast and you already know where I stand. And I would hope that what I would, you know, some of the things that I would express on the podcast sinks in because 
everything I say on the podcast, I believe in. Unfortunately, so many people get on these platforms talking shit that they do not believe. And when it comes to our responsibility, especially like as folks who get on mics and, and talk this shit, like I take this shit much more. I, I take this shit seriously. I really, I just, I really do. Like, I, I don't want to get on this microphone and say anything that I don't believe in or anything else. We, we joke every now and again, and you could tell every now when we it's satire and we joking, but real talk when it comes to the brass tax, far too many folks are only in the, the social media space or in the podcast space or in the YouTube space. Because it gives them money, because it gives them dollars. One of the things I I, I love about Three Guys On, one of the things I love about uh, when Chris was doing the insanity check, one of the things mm-hmm. I love about Rod with the black guy who tips is that I know that they actually believe in what the fuck they saying when they get on these microphones. And I think uh, it's incumbent upon us when we do get on these mics to you know when, when we're talking about some you know substantive issues that we actually give the folks the correct information, the right information, and not just be like on some, I'm going to just say this shit because I'm going to get paid. <laughs> that like, And that's just what it boils down to me. Like even when it comes to the podcasting space, there's so many people who only podcasting because they think it's a way to get paid. And I've never been about, I mean, I would love to monetize this yeah, shit. We want to get paid. We want to get yeah. paid. Like I would oh, love, you know. I would love to not go into a nasty basement and do a fuel line for gas service and everything. I would love for y'all to like free me from going to the nasty basements. I would love for that. But in the meantime, I'm not going to bullshit y'all. And I, I, I do appreciate like, like folks like yourself, folks like everybody over th- uh, three guys on, folks like the black guy who tips, folks like everybody who uh, I really do listen. Like Karen Hunter, like I've been a, a Karen Hunter fan for a long. And then I looked up and mm-hmm. Rod was on Karen Hunter. I was like, I be goddamn <laughs> right, yeah, man. I, I I I appreciate those who tell the people the truth, and that's what I appreciate uh, about about this space. But um, yeah, man, like I I just want us to be able to like to to leave a um leave a country for our children especially like like i said when i before we even started the show i did the family reunion thing it was important to me for my younger family members to know who their people were but also it ain't gonna matter if they don't know who their people were because they can't get to their people because they in a goddamn concentration camp right <laughs> right. right so so like no nah, real talk i uh like we have a responsibility on these microphones and I hope we take these things seriously. That, that's, that's really what I want to leave folks with tonight. I mean, I agree. And, um, I'm always, I believe that trying to use a platform to elevate and push things forward. People want to go with it. I, you can only hope that they do. You can only hope that they do. You hope that they're receptive to the things that we have to say. Mm-hmm. And you hope that the people who are out there talking are, are righteous or just righteous with what they're saying. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it. Believe in what you're yeah. talking about, man. Like, don't be yeah. out here like blowing smoke up people's ass. No. And I know, yeah. like, it, there's a check and blowing smoke up people's asses. I get it. People do it all day long. It's a big check. There's a big check. In there's that. a big check in it. Yeah, and if I was check. like, you know how, like, that, that's the other part that's so crazy about this, right? You know how easy it would be to be on here, like, yo, man, that shit that happened to Donald Trump today. That yeah, was, that was fucked up. Y'all are fucked up for doing that. You know how easy I could like make how easy it would be to just be on some right wing grifty tortoise shit. Like it, it's so many people on YouTube who like I Rod know. And I, Rod and I have talked about that many times. That, so many that door is open it's, for a black for a black person who can talk. <laughs> that door's open. So that door's open for you. Many. <laughs> And, they, and they've you. done it. And they've done it. Was it uh, the amazing Lucas dude? Like, ironically, like I've seen this dude. Like I, I've seen this cat. Like, kind of like vacillate towards I'm on the fitness shit, but I'm gonna be on his right wing shit. But like now I'm, I'm, you know, like once they once they built up the audience, and like so like you know, like they can just move in that way, and the money is there just because they are black face willing mm-hmm. to say the things that white people feel comfortable with. Mm-hmm. 
J J Full was saying in the chat, I knew Randolph was living his rap when he when he quit the NFL called Turkey. I walked with the NFL for a while. Pull it up. It's still here's the thing about the NFL that I noticed that walking away from it when when Kaepernick was happening really teaches you how deeply embedded the NFL is in American culture yeah. because you literally can't get away from it. You Even can. if you're not watching, you know everything that's happening. Yeah. You can't get away from it. And at that time, I was working at, at a at a television station. Yeah. So yeah. in DC. So and the show that I wrote for, Dan Snyder was giving us something every day to, to write about. Every yeah. day he gave us something funny to to bring on. That would be the first thing we would say in the production meetings. We'd be like, okay, what did he do? Did he do something? Yeah. Was there something here yeah. we can talk about? Sure enough, there's going to be something. Uh, we had a gift. They had a sewage problem at the stadium, and sewage water was just raining down from like the third level yeah. onto the lower levels, yeah. out into the crowd. We used we used that video for any. We use it all the time. We were always trying to know what's a way we can get this video. In? Can we get the Can we get stadium video into this into this scene? Yeah, I'll write it in. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll get it in. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that told us right there that that told me right there. It just football is it's it's also a a, a micro i think all of sports is becoming this but it's a really deep um microcosm of american culture particularly mm-hmm. as it as it per- pertains to race yeah so if you really want to know what's happening racial wise in this country just kind of tune in on the nfl season when you see the shit that's happening between and even it's it's actually growing beyond that now with this guy Harrison I can't say his name Bucker Butker, Butker, yeah Bucker Butker, is it Butker, Butker Harrison Bucker now he's gone he's drifting off into what women should do so that's that's how I call that the MAGA effect it's spreading yeah. out now it's this is what women should do and it's coming out of the sporting world yeah you can't get away from it yeah it's that deeply embedded into our society well not only that like. Even when what was going on with like uh, with 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 Kaepernick, the mm-hmm. um, there was always the misconception that sports was apolitical. Like, oh, it's not. There, there's always the people who people who say that are first of all they're yeah, lying. Yeah, they're lying. And secondly, like, they're they're talking about they wanted to be apolitical when they don't agree with your particular. That's it. With what you and that's I don't even it. call it politics. I don't call. Advocating for Black lives to have value attached to them being a political statement. There's nothing political about. There's that. nothing that's, political that's, about. But they will attach politics, politics yeah. to it. Yeah, that's just the way to shut things down because you're not supposed to talk about politics. Yeah, but but like, yeah, if your thing, yeah, but if it ain't your thing, then. But if it ain't your thing, we're not supposed to be talking about that, right? right? Like, like right. I, I don't watch these games because it is like, well, 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 wait a minute. So like, like the thing with with the Kaepernick yeah. thing, and is. This is what I always thought was interesting when, like, uh, with with the boycotts, uh, you had white folk who were boycotting the NFL because they didn't like that the players were kneeling, and then you had black folk who were boycotting because they didn't like how the players who were kneeling were being treated, and at the same time, both sides were taking credit for the uh, the, the the drop in ratings of the NFL. Which they both probably could, but like they were they were taking credit for it for two different totally different meanings. The NFL was suffering, but only because you had some who were mad about this and some who were mad about that. But at the same time, y'all mad about the same thing, but for different reasons. And oftentimes, like when when it came, I I I never, for me personally, I never did boycott uh, the NFL. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, only like, like to be honest, man, like I felt as though like at a certain point when it came to the Kaepernick thing, um, shit, when it came to the Kaepernick thing at a certain point, I started feeling like, yo, with Kaepernick, um, yo, bro, tell them what you really want. Tell them what you really want for me. Well, the thing is that articulating that what he wants is for black lives to have value to them. Right. 
you it's that's a hard thing to and spell. how does and how does it's that, a hard thing to quantify and it's not a hard thing to quantify. And how does that equate to right, right. the NFL and you having a job in the NFL, right, right. right? Well, he just used he just used the platform right. that he had. And, and it I wasn't even it. a big thing. He was just mad at him by himself. Yeah, and I wasn't they mad at him at all. On it. I wasn't you know, mad at him at all because he wasn't the only one who was doing it. Marshawn Lynch was doing the exact same fucking thing. Right. Just off by himself. But yeah. Marshawn was just like, I don't feel like doing this. Yeah. He never gave a reason why. And no one ever pressed him. That's yeah. nothing about him. What you mean you don't want to do this? Because they, no they, they knew they couldn't do that to Marshawn. Yeah. Marshawn was like, hey, man, like this is what it is. That's it. I think to, a, to, to some degree, um, you know, when it came to like like the folks, because I know some folks who are still boycotting the NFL behind it, and I was like, "Yo, so like, I get it that like you don't want to watch because of what happened to Kaepernick, but like, um, like what you know, like I don't, not that I'm advocating for the NFL, but what would it take for them to make it right to you, right? Yeah. Like, what would it take for them to make it right to I you? I don't, I don't fault anybody for like I said, I don't, I, I never told anybody, dude, that. I never stood up and said, you all should start watching the NFL and stuff like that. I never stood up and did that. In much the same I, way. I still wouldn't. But what I would tell people is, okay, you know they don't give a fuck about you, right? They don't. They don't give a fuck <laughs> about don't. you. They don't give a fuck about your community. I don't care how many ride-alongs, they do, which is the dumbest shit to me. Everybody <laughs> knows where I stand on that. I don't care how many ride-alongs they do. I don't care... How much money they say they're giving, and and Rod on the show he was writing on of uh, uh, Bomani Jones's show. Yeah, they did a deep breakdown. The NFL is giving a lot of money to black people. They, yeah, but here's the thing: the 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 current, um, let's say, management of the NFL with Roger Goodell and them, they have given money to to black people, something like that. Yeah. It, it owners, is, don't, owners don't give a fuck about black people. They're fuck. openly hostile to black people. Yeah. <laughs> they're openly hostile. Unless you play for them and make them money, they're openly hostile to black yeah. people. They don't give a fuck about it. That's Roger Goodell doing what he can do. That ain't that. He's not the NFL. He's an employee of the he's NFL. He's an employee of the NFL, and he's also he's not the NFL. And it's his job. It's his job to uh, make sure that the NFL is palatable to the most motherfucking like right. the biggest audience. Uh, that they could possibly have. And the so, NFL like, is the NFL is thirty two motherfuckers and they families. Yeah, thirty two white motherfuckers. Well, thirty one white motherfuckers. One, one. I guess he's what's he Middle East? He's Pakistani. I don't know what he is. Oh, he's you talking brown. about the man uh, with the uh, with one, the Jacksonville one Jaguars? Brown, Khan. One brown motherfucker Khan. and they families. Yeah, Khan. Khan. Yeah, and they families. That's who. The, that's who the NFL is. No, nah, like and everybody else who thinks they're not. I, well, I shouldn't say because. The Packers are owned by the I guess, I want to say the the whole all of Green Bay owns the Packers. Is that how that, is that, how that works? <laughs> I think so. I think you can buy you can buy a share of the Packers. It's I like think a stock they've exchange. all bought shares. I don't know if there's yeah. a family that's the, the controlling. I think they have like the like I think the town owns the team, but then they have like a managing yeah. board or some shit like that. Yeah, some shit like that. Yeah. But for the most part, no. And trust and believe in Green Bay, they don't give a fuck about these black players. Oh my god. So, so <laughs> like I said, I won't tell somebody. Well, you got to decide. That. You got to decide for yourself. Me personally, I was just like, I can't. I can't. No, I, I used to fuck with people though. Though I, I used to fuck with people. That. I'd be like, Yo, so you boycotting the NFL, but you ain't boycotting R. Kelly. <laughs> oh, I got out. I got out R. Kelly, man. I got out of R. Kelly when when the tape came out. That's how far back I go with Listen, R. Kelly. I was a, when the tape came out. Yeah. I was like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm done. I, 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 never, I never turned the music off. But he'll never get another dime out of me. Listen, I was <laughs> again. You gotta understand. I'm from Chicago. And yeah, I, I just had a family reunion, and it was R. Kelly music being played. Well, y'all was stepping in the name of love. I was not. Check this out. <laughs> I was not. And the first thing my wife did was look dead at me because she was like, "I know you hate this," but at the same time, like my family, largely being from Chicago, like and knowing what he means unfortunately what he means to people from chicago i'm just like i'm gonna i'm gonna let these niggas cook 
But um, this some bullshit. <laughs> like this some bullshit. I'm not dancing in the name of nothing. Fuck this nigga. <laughs> but like, you ain't gonna, gonna step in the name of in the name no, of sir. Uh, no sir. No sir. No sir. I would. I would. Pre- I would have preferred they never played this nigga's music at all. But again, that's to me. Like in my family, I I know that that's an unrealistic. Step in ask. the name of these young girls. Nah. It, to, in my family, it's an unrealistic ask. I've I've already talked to these niggas. They know how I feel about it. But they kept they, they played this nigga anyway, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna let these niggas cook. But this some bullshit. This <laughs> this some bullshit. <laughs> but yo, man, check this out. Yo, Randolph. Yes, sir. We didn't had a good. I, I I've had a damn good time talking to you tonight, yeah, man. man. You got to come over to three guys on. I hey, we gonna work that out. Hey, we, we got we got to do that. We got to do that, man. Real talk. Yeah. But uh, before we get out of here, let everybody know how they can get in touch with you, brother. You can hit me on uh, my socials. Yes, if you hit me on at uh, he is funny on X, <laughs> he is funny on Twitter. I'll still respond to you. You can find me and reach me at uh, Randolph Terrence on Instagram, Randolph Terrence on uh, Facebook, threads. and Randolph Terrence on Threads. He's on Threads, y'all. Randolph Terrence on Threads. Also, check out my check out my Substack. It's called Rand Stack. R A N D stack, Rand stack, sub stack, Rand stack. There's some, there's some of my writing is over there that you can, you can go ahead and, and uh, write and listen and uh, check out some of the stuff I work on. Uh, I'd appreciate anybody who would go and check that out. Um, follow me on all my social stuff. Just Randolph Terrence all over social. Just Google Randolph Terrence. I'm everywhere, and uh, I appreciate anybody who, whenever I write something to put something up, give me some feedback on it. I appreciate y'all. Also, podcast. Three guys on. Three guys on. We all yeah. we have a YouTube page. The word three guys on. We have a YouTube page, of course. We also have our um, Patreon, which is there's a lot of stuff behind that wall. Go come on behind that wall for Don't us. be a freeloader. Give us a few dollars. Don't and we have a freeload episode that comes out on Thursday. We do have that episode. <laughs> the unwashed masses. Y'all come on and get just come on and get some. Come, come on get and get some. some. Come get Myself some. Myself and Andy Klein. Yeah, we're having a good time. We're gonna have Mr. Span on with us now. That's that's gonna happen. Hey that's man, I, happen. I, I, I listen here, bro. Like I said, this is a long time overdue. Long time coming, man. Long time overdue. I should have had I, I, I should have had Randolph on here a long time ago, man. Mm-hmm. And uh I, I'm glad you reached out, brother. Cause uh like I was like oversight on my part. You know what's funny is that I very rarely I very rarely do stuff like that. But I'm glad um, you did. Reach out where and, and I think that it yeah, I think it needs to be done more we, often we, amongst we definitely, people like ourselves. We definitely people do. like ourselves. We need to do that more often. Reach out to people and 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 build and just try to build big we're already halfway there between Listen, all of our interactions I, you know, and stuff. I, I want to say build this. bigger community. I, I want to say this. I think this is something that we did more when we were all new to it. Yeah. When we were all new to it, I think we were all yeah. kind of like yo, I yo, I want to have such and such. I, yo, I want to, and then like you know, life, and then like the yeah. shows, and like like these things, like it just happens, and then we kind of get into these. Uh, we kind of get into our mode, like we get into a rhythm mm-hmm. of doing mm-hmm. things a certain way, and like when you reach out, like yo. How the fuck have I not had? Mm-hmm. How mm-hmm. have I not had Randolph on? Well, the when show? I saw that, I was like, I, you know what? I haven't, I haven't done. Yeah, how have I not had Randolph I've on the show? A lot of shows. I haven't done so, show. yeah, yeah, man. I, I, I appreciate yeah. you, brother, for reaching out, man. And like, yo, we gonna do this a hell of a lot more. Well, you often. coming back on? You coming over to us? So that's hey, gonna be the next hey, thing. Hey, we, we, we gotta do that. We gotta do that, man. That's but uh, b- before I get out of here, because even though I know y'all know how to do this, I'm gonna remind y'all. How to get in touch with us over here at the Mr. Span Official Podcast and let your voice be heard. Go ahead and hit up our email at feedback at the span report.com. Okay, that's feedback at the span report.com. Leave us those emails. Of course, those emails will get read here and reply to here live on the show. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, man. Leave us those comments on the YouTube channel, man. We really do appreciate everybody who leaves those comments, man. And subscribe to the YouTube channel, the span report.com. You will get these shows live on. Of course, we do this show live on YouTube and Facebook. But if you're following me on YouTube, man, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave us comments on the channel. We read those comments as we're doing the show. And we also will read those comments as part of our feedback when we do the show. Uh, the next show, you'll be a part. We're trying to get everybody's voices heard here on the, on this platform, man. So we really appreciate everybody who does that. Follow me on Threads and Instagram. My name on both of those platforms is Mr. Underscore Span. So go ahead, follow me there. Chop it up with your man Span throughout the week. Also, on Spotify, uh, we do have polls on Spotify. Uh, we have uh, question and answers on Spotify. Uh, yo, participate in that, man. We appreciate everybody who does that. 
another way for you to get your voice heard here on the show, man. Real talk. I appreciate Randolph for coming through, and we will talk to you guys again soon. But until next time, fam, peace.